into my talk, I have to say, this philosophy changes lives. I know because it's changed mine. Do you want to feel more connected to life, to your fellow man, to your family? Wouldn't that be wonderful? That's what this place gives you. The reason why I know it's happened to me. I love this place. Now, I had a little story here that I was going to do at some point in my talk, and I don't think it really is appropriate in the middle. So I have this little ditty right here. An old Italian gentleman wanted to plant his annual tomatoes in his garden. His only son, Vincent, who used to help him, was in prison. The old man wrote a letter to his son. And this is what it said. Dear Vincent, I'm pretty sad because it looks like I won't be able to plant my tomato garden this year. I'm just getting too old to be digging up the garden plot. I know if you were here, my troubles would be over. I know you would be happy to dig the plot for me like in the old days. Love, Papa. A few days later, he receives a letter from his son, and it says this. Dear Papa, don't dig up the garden. That's where the bodies are buried. <laughs> Love, Vinny. <laughs> the very next day, 4 a.m., FBI agents, local police arrived, dug up the entire area without finding any bodies. <laughs> they apologized to the old man and left. Later that same day, the old man received another letter from his son. Dear Papa, go ahead and plant tomatoes now. That's the best I could do under the circumstances. Love you, Vinny. So my talk title is, Is Your Life Perfect? That seems to be the question from the time you're old enough to understand you have to work for a living. Life is not perfect. You just have to make the best of it. Isn't that what's been said an awful lot? It's not really what we teach here. But again, life is not perfect. You just have to make the best of it. Day in and day out, waking up, do, going to work, buying the groceries, cleaning out the kitty litter box. <laughs> That's perfection, I don't know. But I always thought that that statement meant that I was predestined or that my life was already planned out. And so... I like to say, life is not predestined. You just have to make the most, make the best of it. Because life happens, like we always say here. Can't really plan it out. You just have to deal with what comes up. Yes, we can have ideas of what we want to accomplish that day or how we see ourselves in the future. And that's all well and good. But we've got to deal with right now. Where am I today? So let's get back to square one. Every faith has higher power or powers. It's the manifestations that are different. Isn't that true? Every single philosophy has an idea of what that perfect life is. They either keep it from you, and say you have to do X, Y, Z to get there, or you have to take these classes to get there, or you have to pray to this person or give this amount of money, or whatever the case may be. But that's not always the case. 
The common thread is there's always flowing energy. In each and every philosophy, there's always talking about whether you call it God, a higher power, nature, or energy, it's all the same thing. There is a power that we all use. No matter what the faith is, no matter what your foundation is, it's always the same. It's a power and our connection to it. So we have organized religions. Like I said, many major faiths, take your pick, they all talk about the same thing. And yes, they have their traditions and their rituals on how they do things at certain time of the years. And and those traditions are wonderful. I love to see them. And, and in fact, actually, because of this place, I am having a greater appreciation for every single faith's um, what am I trying to say? Expression or their, their, their rituals. There it is, rituals. Their rituals. I'm I'm really appreciating it and not saying, oh, I don't do that. No, I see it for the beauty of what it is. Regardless of whether I understand it or not, I see the beauty in it. And then you have spirituality, which are the nature-based philosophies. In fact, we're actually one. We don't believe in just one way of, of, of living life. We honor them all. And those people who don't even go to church, but they believe in nature and holistic ideas about what life is. But it's still there. It's still that one power. Even atheists. We've got a little bit of a ring in here. Am I just a little bit hot? Um, but even atheists have a way of living. Their connection, what they think life is about. All three of these are totally different, wouldn't you say? But they have one thing in common. They have a belief. They believe that their way is the right way. The beautiful thing is, they are all correct. There is not one way up the mountain like what the song was talking about. We can move mountains. There's not one path. There are many paths. How you see it, how you live it, how you walk it is up to you. I'm not up here to tell you how to walk your path. I'm just here to make you realize that you are on a divine path, that you are a divine expression of that one life, that one power, whatever you call it. Now go have fun. Belief that this is dangerous. Some people look at that and go, oh my gosh, up on a cliff and, and there's water. What, what is this guy thinking about being up there with, you know, he could get washed down the mountain. But there's a belief in that this is dangerous. And for some, it may be. And I've tried to invite some people to come along with me, but in fact, actually, I, I'm getting ready to go somewhere, and I invited my dad to go along with me. And after watching some of the videos, I sent him, he goes, Billy, I love you. But I'm just not going to go because I think I'm going to hold you back. <laughs> and I said, Dad, you can come with me. I just won't take you on those heavy ones. He goes, no, I'm okay. <laughs> it's individualized perspective. That last photo that we saw, each and every one of us had an idea of what that photo represented. Some people saw the waterfall, some people saw the danger, some people saw, oh my gosh, that car's going to get dents in it, what is he thinking, all that sort of stuff. Perspective is everything. The person in the truck is looking at that. Tranquility, peace, calm, nature. How about this? Seeing a connection to that divine nature that is in, within each and every one of us. That is something to treasure 
and to see in individualized expressions as we see people living their life. Their life is, may not be what's for me, but who am I to judge what they're doing? They could be completely content, and not just content, extremely pleased and thankful for how they are living their lives. Who are we to judge what their life is? That's the beauty about spirituality. Trust and know your own connection, your own way of living, because you, each and every one of you, are that divine expression. Hold on to it. Cherish it. Live it. But watch out for the judgment of what someone else is doing because it may seem a little bit dangerous or a little bit out of the norm for how you live. But live from that idea that their life is no less a perfection of that divine spirit. And when you can see that, you can be like me. And get moved by every one of you. I used to think, and this is like me going off on a tangent, so buckle up, Buttercup. I used to think that crying or showing tears was always about being sad or being remorseful. Oh, I got caught breaking the, you know, the statue, and so now I'm going to get a whooping. But because I've found this divine nature, this philosophy, and my connection to life. Whether you want to call it God or not, I don't care. It doesn't matter. But when you find a connection to your own life, and you can see the beauty everywhere around you, this swelling up that you see me do every once in a while has nothing to do with sadness. It is an overwhelming power of joy Do you want to feel like that? Do, would you love to have that type of an emotion to be living your life and see someone else and be moved by the connection that you see that person having? That is what we are doing here. That is what we do on Sunday. We are opening ourselves up to that divine nature that each and every one of us are. It's all based on perspective, a personal vantage point. Exactly. I, I love how I keep rambling on, and it's, oh, it's my next slide. But it's true. Your vantage point. Your vantage point may be the pinnacle for your life, but it is not the pinnacle of life. Because when you get to your mountaintop, guess what? There's another mountain off in the horizon. Make your pathway to it. Enjoy the ride. Smell the roses. And be grateful for the people that you meet along your path. Alicia and I just did a memorial yesterday. And I don't know if this is in part of my slides or not or where it is, but I'm just going to go with it, you know. But I had a lot going on because I do more than just this in taking care of this whole place, which I absolutely love because I don't have to take care of my own house. <laughs> but it was difficult in getting the slides and the music, and then there was a little bit of change here and a little bit of change there. And I found myself kind of getting a little bit miffed or, or just kind of, okay, yes, but yes, I can do it. And yes, I did do it. But when we actually did the service yesterday, I found myself sitting right in the back there and I was getting moved because the person who that we were celebrating talk about a life of touching people. I don't think I've ever seen a service, uh, a memorial, so packed. There was more people 
yesterday than there is today. It was wonderful. But the thing about it was, he was connected. He had a passion about what he did. He had a passion for the people that he worked for and worked with. And that showed. And that passion that he had was contagious. And I could see that each and every person in the room yesterday was the exact same way. There was a lust for life. That is what we're here to do. We are to bringing back, we are here to bring back that lust for life like you had when you were that child on your first bicycle riding down the street. That's the type of life that is always here. But it sometimes gets trampled on because of the honeydew list or the I gotta do's and I gotta be here, I gotta be there. And one thing I did realize is I noticed that all the spiritual people, Jesus, Buddha, they, they weren't businessmen. They weren't bankers. They weren't administrators in a church because I'm married to one, and that woman is nonstop thinking about everything under the sun. But Jesus, the carpenter, was working on wood. And I realized that because of what I do. I'm working on one thing, and it may be hard, it may be strenuous, but it gives me time to think. And I think that's what happens, is people who have a mundane type of job are really thinking in their heads about what life is. How can I be better? Is this true? And that's just a little tangent that I went on, but I just realized that Hmm. So I kind of like what I do then. Funny thing happened on the way to church this week. I already talked about that, and that's what I was just doing, so we'll skip that one right there. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Perspective, again, how are you viewing your life? Some of us may be, whoo, it's a roller coaster ride. Others may be going, I need five cups of coffee before my feet hit the ground in the morning. But it's the perspective. What if we could change our way of thinking and looking at our lives, what we've chosen as a career? What if we could change that and be excited about that? Whether you're flipping burgers at a burger joint or whether you're the CEO of some company, if you have a passion and are vested in what you're doing that day, not just thinking it's something I have to do so that I can get off at 5 o'clock or whatever time it is, but when you are vested in what you are doing at that moment, you are in alignment with spirit. You are connected. And guess what? That burden that you may feel is lifted there is not this weight on your shoulder. Rise up and move mountains. That's, Alicia's, that's a verse out of Alicia's song, I believe. Be a mountain mover. You already are. You just don't know it, possibly. But I'm here to tell you, if Dr. Laura, Dr. Dale... Myself can be a mountain mover. Guess what? You are no different than any of us because you are nothing short than the totality of spirit. Individualized on your own path, but you have the same power. You have the same passion. Go find it. Connect with it. Be that person that can look across and see something happening. Be moved by a movie knowing that it's fake. But when you see a connection in that movie and you are moved because of something that you see, you, are know, that you know that you are divinely connected to spirit. And to have that type of life and that type of understanding and that type of realization, that, 
my friends, is what life is about. What if we could be the light that no one could ignore? What if? Sweetheart, you already are. You just haven't turned on your light switch. The power is always there. The connection is always there. You just need to turn it on. You just need to be that light, not hope for it, not wish for it. Know that you are that divine expression of spirit and that you can be the light for anyone, no matter whether you're sleeping on the streets tomorrow night or whether you're in a mansion. The roof over your head doesn't make you who you are. It's this right here. It's that divine passion, that divine connection, realizing that you are nothing less than, and short than the perfection of spirit. Definition of perfect, having all the required or desirable elements, qualities, and characteristics as good as it is possible to be. Going back to that original slide. Isn't that spirit? Isn't that a good definition of spirit? You having all that is desired. Spirit, ourselves, it's here. I don't have to go searching for it. It's here. Open yourself up. Open your heart up. Open up your feelings. Connect yourself. Ground yourself. As good as it's possible to be. The only limitation is here. This limits this. And when you can get this out of the way, this has nothing but to express and to be that inspiration. Here's an affirmation. I am perfect as I am. Everything in my life is working just the way it should. I am love and I am loved. Let's say that together. I am perfect as I am. Everything in my life is working just the way it should. I am love and I am loved. Did you feel it or did you just say it? I think you guys were just saying it. I, I want you to believe. No, no, I'm sorry. I need you to know this. Say it again with me, but with passion this time. I am perfect as I am. Everything in my life is working just the way it should. I am loved and I am loved. Your life is perfect. Buckle up, buttercup, and enjoy the ride. <laughs>